he's obviously a boss, right? So um, I don't think he's the final boss, but I'm gonna guess he's a very significant boss. Hey music friends, this is Davi Vasca, I'm a music composer for games and Elden Ring is finally, finally out. So today we're going to listen to and talk about the most requested track from Elden Ring by you guys, which is Godric the something. Godric the Grafted. So as you probably can tell, I haven't played the game. I don't know uh, anything about the story, but anyway, let's go. Okay, disturbing. Oh, listen. Listen to this rhythm. Back and forth. Very disturbing stuff here. You guys remember on my first video about Elden Ring music, where I talked about how Elden Ring seemed to be going more for a more mainstream orchestral style, more Hollywood style. This track here seems to have that kind of Hollywood, more mainstream feel, but at the same time, it feels a bit more like traditional Soulsborne to me. For starters, listen to what they're going to do here at the beginning. They're piling up little by little. So little by little the, the, the brass notes starts piling up these notes. Uh, and this kind of chord here. This is an extremely disturbing chord, and it's the kind of chord that they love to use in Soulsborne. They put this everywhere, especially in, in darker games like Souls, uh, like uh, Bloodborne. They use this in pretty much every Bl Bloodborne track, and they're using this right at the beginning here to build tension and, and probably create a very terrifying image of this Godric guy. And then listen to this. The rhythm here is very frantic. But, again, this reminds me a little bit of Bloodborne, because this is a... This chord is so good. This rhythm here is a waltz, is a three-beat measure, and there's something so macabre, macabre, macabre about using three-beat measures like this uh, in such a sinister and evil and disturbing sounding track, because it ends up sounding like a horrifying uh, kind of dance of death and it's exactly what they did on the Ludwig theme uh, for Bloodborne so there's kind of an ironic uh, sinister feel uh, to this track here it kind of feels like an, an evil dance check this out one two three one two three one two three one two three so it's a waltz see and then there's there's this Feel how heroic and positive this last chord was here. This is the kind of stuff that feels very new to me. It's, it's very Elden Ring like. Remember on my first video about Elden Ring music where I talked about the, the main theme of Elden Ring, which is so positive and so heroic, which is something so uncommon for Soulsborne music, right? This is uh, this more positive uh, feel is a characteristic unique to Elden Ring. And here in this score that I just uh, talked about, they show a little bit of that, a little bit, a little bit of that uniqueness of Elden Ring. So what he's doing is this. This last chord here is a happy chord, right? So Elden Ring doesn't shy away from using happy chords and heroic chords to uh, portray these, these battles. Oh 
man. Listen to the disturbing violence on the left screen. And especially the percussion. Feels like they are going out of their way to, to disturb you. I have explained here on the channel uh, what syncopation is before, right? Syncopation is when they put, when they emphasize a beat on the rhythm that is not usually a beat that you would expect to be emphasized. Usually in a, in a three beat measure like this, we expect the strong beat to be the, the first one, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the one is the strong beat. So here they are emphasizing other beats that are not the one and that throws us off completely and it makes it sound very disturbing and unpredictable. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. See, they, they had a, a strong percussion hit on the two instead of the one. Makes it sound weird. Oh. So far... Oh, second phase. So far, I'm trying to keep my eyes open or my ears open for more positive and heroic chords like the ones we found at the beginning. But honestly, this sounds very terrifying, very disturbing. It's probably the most disturbing track I've ever heard from Elden Ring. And in, in, in that sense, it's the most Soulsborne-like track from Elden Ring. So this makes me think that this Godric guy is probably a very, very terrifying guy because he probably is so, so terrifying that even in a more musically positive game as Elden Ring, he's so terrifying that he deserves a terrifying, a, a disturbing theme like this. So I'm gonna guess uh, he's obviously a boss, right? So I'm, I don't think he's the final boss, but I'm gonna guess he's a very significant boss, a, a, a specially terrifying and dangerous boss to deserve a music like this. Let's start from the second phase here. Very powerful chords. The type of chord that they were using there at the beginning of the second phase. This is what we call a fifth chord. Some people call it a power chord because it's very powerful. And an interesting thing about this chord is that it doesn't have a note that we call the third. And the third is the note that is responsible for giving emotions to the chords. It let, lets us know if the chord is happy or sad. So this power chord doesn't have a, th a third, it doesn't have emotion, so it feels powerful and strong in a very emotionless and dead, lifeless kind of way. Oh man. The rhythm again. Extremely unsettling. This is... This is a seven beat measure which is extremely uncommon and very unsettling. Oh. oh wow. 
wow, that, that race. Doesn't it sound cool, that, that little race? This is something called chromatic mode, and chromatic mode means that... It, this is some high-level stuff, by the way, this is very impressive. Chromatic mode means that the composer is basically saying, screw scales, screw key, uh, screw wrong notes and right notes, I'm gonna use whatever notes I want in the keyboard. Every single note in the keyboard is available for me to use. That's what going chromatic mode means. There's more to it than that, there's more nuance to it than that, but, but that, that's basically it. It makes it so that every single note in the keyboard becomes a correct note that, that you can use. And this kind of raise here, chromatic raise that he's doing, is such an effective way to increase tension because he's increasing in pitch, right? And increasing in pitch, of course, means increasing in tension, so he's slowly building tension here. Man, the rhythm in this is so unsettling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's that seven beat measure. Oh! But now they changed it. They went back to the dance. Oh my god, so... So disturbing. The chromatic again. They, they used the chromatic thing again, but instead of going up in pitch, they went down this time. Isn't that cool? So, like I said, going up in pitch means building tension, increasing tension. Going down in pitch is releasing tension. And usually a release of tension is a good thing, right? It feels good, it feels peaceful, but the overall vibe of this track and, and the background chords here feel so unsettling and disturbing that even this release of tension doesn't feel like a good kind of release of tension. It feels like a kind of I'm dying release of tension, you know. Oh, now they're going up again. They keep going up and down. It's like a battle that keeps going back and forth both ways. Oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They went back again to the dance waltz kind of rhythm. So much going on in this. Such a fantastic track. I've referenced in this video a bunch of things that I've said in my previous video about Elden Ring music, so go over here so you can watch that video so you know what I'm talking about. And also, I have a bunch of videos about the music in Soulsborne games. Go over here, I'm gonna put a playlist here for you, and remember, whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again, I'll see you there.